pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for the sick, handicapped, departed, and the military personnel of this community. Thank you very much. substantial and one minor. Um, the road is not as wide there, so the problem is the car stick out of the road a little bit further than the normal parking space should. I have no off-street parking options. I can't park anywhere else. So that's where I'm at. I have three cars in front of my house, and one of them is my, my vehicle and two other little cars. Um, the car that hit my car was a hit and run. No one knew who it was, no one saw what it was, it just hit the car and left. So this is getting old, I'm just saying. Um, the speed limit sign says 25, but it says 15 miles an hour whenever you go over the speed bumps. Why don't you just make it 15 miles an hour all the way up the road? Because it's 15 miles an hour as you come up the road there. If you come up bridge, off of McLaughlin, up the hill it says 15 miles an hour. That should continue all the way through because the road can't handle the traffic. The traffic's going to come down regardless. It is what it is. But the speed limit needs to be slower so people can realize that there's cars parked on the road and also. Um, I'm not sure I understand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There was another restaurant, a re resident that wanted to come that he didn't show tonight. His name's Jay Domenico. He, his, his concerns are the same, but someone hit one of his mirrors on his car, and, and it, it, it's just getting old. I mean, um, I'm... Bill, can you talk to Chief and see what... Yeah, we'll just look at that and see what we can do. If you could put, like, a car up there every once in a while, just... Whatever, and if you can just leave a car up there with like a dummy in it, maybe. You <laughs> see it in other um, communities, right? You know, have it parked there in that empty lot there. You can have them faced out toward the road, and you know, and then that one day, you know, maybe you have a real officer in the car, and they can figure out what's going on. I mean, it's not just the residents going up and down that street. It is the residents going to the Bedrooms Farm uh, housing project or housing development up there and it's other cars coming from other directions so I mean can't stop what's already gone through but we can change it maybe the speed limit's too high for that road I mean it's 25 I know it's a state law right. but it's kind of confusing you have 15 25 15 15 25 so it says speed bumps 15 miles an hour. Right. So, Thanks, Joel. Basically it. So take a look at oh, it. Oh, by the way, congratulations on the, the election, Ms. Copeland, uh, all the other new members. That's all I got to say. Thanks, Joel. Uh, council, I'd like to recognize Bob Fryer. Yeah, please. Hi. Right. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that. 
is something similar to Joel mentioned. Congratulations on the new electees to council and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to mention that the, the last year, last couple of years, I feel has been really a, uh, some great things have been happening in Bridgeville. Because for the first time in a long time, uh, you guys addressed the traffic congestion problem. You got together with the other communities and did the uh, Seven Lane Bridge and the other modifications. And uh, again, once again, I, I hope you continue with that. And I just want to mention that the uh, years ago when the Bridgeville Business District collapsed and the tax revenue generation became less, it threw a greater burden on the residents. And by reviving or recreating our business district, that will all change. Yeah, our business district, because of its location, has great potential to generate great tax revenue for uh, the community. And uh, I hope you guys continue on that. I'll help if I can. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to, like to recognize John D'Amico and Johnny Miller. Hi, uh, we, we just wanted to, uh, we're, I'm Jonathan, do we have to go yeah. oh, <laughs> <you. laughs> <laughs> Next time I made it. Um, Jonathan, it's Johnny, we just wanted to stop in and say hi, introduce ourselves, congratulations to all the, the new electees and the re-electees. Um, we we uh, planted a church here in Bridgeville called Beloved, and we're meeting uh, right down in town here. And we just wanted to make ourselves available to the community, uh, any needs that might be needed. Or any resources that you guys need manpower or assistance with, uh, we just want to make ourselves available. And, uh, yeah. Where's yeah. the church at? So we're actually we're meeting at the at the Methodist uh, church, okay. and uh, they were kind enough to let us uh, come and. Uh, we got Mary. Kids. Mary plays electric guitar every once in a while. Oh yeah. Are yeah. you like pastor? Uh, 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 I guess you could call it that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, so uh, we, we plan to continue to have, you know, Jonathan or I or some other people come and uh, our desire is to partner with the community and to try to do the things that um, might benefit. So yeah, hopefully we'll continue to get to know everybody and uh, be a resource. Well, welcome to Bridgeville. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Well, that's all the visitors. Thank you. Um, we'll go on with the, the minute, uh, minutes. Um, motion to vote of council regarding the minutes of October 9, 2017. Mm -hmm. Regular minutes as submitted. So moved. Second. Chris uh, Garducci and Bert Cherry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. uh, conditional use application 621 will up on one vote. Uh, conditional use application was submitted by 714 Ventures Incorporated for the property located at 621 McLaughlin Road. This property is lo located in the mixed use district. The, uh, the applicant uh, proposes to utilize the property for auto repair and the powder coating of vehicles and vehicle parks. Uh, this, this use falls under the category of vehicle repair garage, which is a conditional use subject to 903. Point four one of the zoning ordinance uh, variance has been obtained by the applicant for the minimum lot width. A comment letter has been submitted by Engineer Sykes noting that all requirements in 903.41 have been addressed. The Planning Commission has recommended the consideration of the application by Council. A uh, public hearing was held on November 13th at uh, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. to receive public comments. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. I'll second. I'll second. All right. Uh, Bruce Calarducci and Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Welcome to Bridgeville. Yes. <laughs> um, proposed ordinance number 997. Uh, motion of borough council regarding ordinance number 997, an ordinance renaming the public street known as Locust Alley to Eagle Way. Uh, ordinance has been duly advertised. So who? Who's that? Uh, Joe Perucci <coughs> and Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number two and final 2017 pavement maintenance program. Uh, 
motion of the Borough Comp regarding the remittal of current estimate number two in final 2017 pavement maintenance program to Young Club Paving Incorporated in the amount of $18,320.29 for what completed to date. Uh, estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineers' sites. So moved. Mr. Arricci. Second. Mr. Cosmo. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Okay. <clears throat> Current estimate number one and final 2015 pavement maintenance program contract fee. Uh, <clears throat> motion of the Borough Council regarding the renewal of current estimate number one and final 2015 pavement maintenance program contract fee to T.A. Robinson in the amount of $202,594.77 for work completed to date. The yes, estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. So Bruce, Don Ricci, oh, second. and Bill Henderson. And comment from Mayor yes. Blasio. This $202,000, and we are, I believe, going to get approximately $30,000 back from equitable gas, or people's gas, mm -hmm. uh, because they replaced the gas line before we paid, which was very efficient. It still leaves us at approximately $172,000. Now, I have real questions of why this borough is paying $172,000. I believe that Gateway Engineers should be paying $172,000 and not this borough. I don't think council has a choice, by the way. You know, T.A. Robinson did the work. You have a contract. You've got to pay them. You all need to vote to pay them. So please don't, if, don't, don't take this as a request for you to vote against paying them, because it's not. You don't have a choice. As is oftentimes the case as elected officials, you really don't have much say-so. At least not at this moment. But you do have say-so about who oversees and who does this work, and who looks at this work. And Gateway Engineer's history with Bower Hill Road is not good. In 2013, Gateway Engineers prepared the specifications, supervised and inspected the repairs, gave you the same request to make payment to council. Payment was made. And not a year later, the road failed in 2014. In 2015, Gateway Engineers prepared specifications and bids were received for daylight work at $68,738. That's the contract that this work is being performed under, as, as, as I understand it. A contract from July of 2015 that was supposed to be completed by September of 2015. Now, I understand that there were delays for logical reasons, one of which was to allow the gas company to replace the gas line. That made sense. What didn't make sense is that we've gone from 68,735, actually it was awarded at 72,738 because it was supposed to be done at night. So instead, we're at approximately $172,000 after the gas company reimburses us for work that should have been done properly in 2013. Now, Gateway Engineers has been, on has been the party that has looked at it, inspected it, and frankly, I think they should bear the cost of $172,000. And if not, we should look as a borough at replacing Gateway Engineers. Because it doesn't do us any good to pay a lot of money to have this kind of work if they're not going to stand behind it. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. All right. Here's a motion on the floor. I second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, calendar year 2018 budget workshop advertisement. Uh, motion of the Borough of Council approving the advertisement of the budget workshop meeting to be held 
on Tuesday, November 21st, 2017, at 6 p.m. Second. Uh, Joe Rucci and Bruce Gallarucci, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, calendar year 2018 proposed budget advertisement. Uh, motion to Borough Council approving the advertisement of the calendar year 2018 proposed budget to be available for public inspection on Monday, November 27, 2017. This advertisement will meet and exceed the 10 days uh, public review requirement per borough code. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Bruce Aye. and Burke Cherry, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, bill list. Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding the November 2017 bill list. Moved. Second. Bill Bruce Gallarucci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Payrolls. Motion of the Borough Council approving the payrolls of November 17, 24, and December 1 and 8, 2017. So moved. Uh, Bruce Gallarucci. Second. And Joe Klosno, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, motion, uh, monthly reports, motion to accept and pay any commissions due October 2017 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Joe Perducci. Second. And Bert Cherry, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the September 2017 financial report. I'll move. Joe Perducci. Second. And Bruce Gallarucci. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> carries. Motion to accept the October 2017 police report. So moved. Second. Bill Anderson and Burke Cherry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. And motion to accept the October 2017 zoning report. So moved. Second. Uh, Bill Anderson and Joe Plasmo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Administration. I don't have any reports, sir. All right. Uh, finance. Uh, as Lori uh, mentioned, we're going to have our budget workshop meeting on November 21st. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, conversations in regards to trying to come up with those numbers. Lori's getting a lot of the different bids and anticipated expenses for 2018. And, uh, as we discussed last year, it was going to be a very interesting year coming up, and as anticipated, it's going to be another very interesting year coming up here in 2018. Great. Thank you, Joe. Parks and Rec. Uh, just Joe. real quick, uh, the parks are still open, but the water has been shut off down in all the parks as far as the restrooms go, so travel at your own risk. The parks are still open, especially with charters, until the weather turns bad. So I can I add something? Um, I'd like to just tell the public uh, what happened down at Chartres Park, uh, what was it, two, three weeks ago? Um, for no reason at all, somebody came down to the park and took out all the guts out of a scoreboard that was purchased from the, the, for the BAA. Um, this would happen right after the, the floods, and we raised a lot of money to get those scoreboards. And somebody just came in, bent the whole thing, put dents all over, took all the guts, every little electronic thing that's 10 years old. I don't even know what on earth they were needed for because it's past technology. No cameras down there? No. Well, we're, 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 we're addressing that this, this time. Is a, this is the second time well, they've they, been it, It's ridiculous. There's no reason to tear apart that scoreboard. Um, the BAA is in the process of finding out, and you know, obviously, thank goodness we have insurance, but it, um, it's just unacceptable. There's no reason to do that because those scoreboards are a lot of money, and, and the kids love to have that stuff available to them. And we're not going to be able to. People go down there for no reason at all and, and just destroy it. I mean, Bill was down there personally, and he unfortunately had to call and tell me the bad news. Uh, it's just very disappointing. And hopefully we can address that with some cameras and different things that we're planning on there. Thank you both. Uh, public works. Yeah, I, all I have, sir, is uh, just remind the, the public that the um, leaf uh, pickup will run through the first week of December, weather permitting, and our brush grinder program will run through the whole month of November. So if you got your leaves, push them up to the curb. 
our guys will pick them up and uh, tree branches, sections of tree or whatever, it'll be along, if you put along the curb, our guys will pick it up and grind it. So yeah. that's if you got Eagle Way with the politics for you. We <laughs> <laughs> have to find out where Eagle Way is now though. <laughs> That's all I should contact the uh, 911 system to uh, let them know that change is going What's that, sir? I'm just happening with the date. What's the pickup on the leaves and stuff? It goes through the whole month of December, or through the first week of December for the leaf pickup. It follows the streets and the schedule. It's online. Public safety, Bill Henderson. Yeah, a couple of things, Mike. Uh, first of all, last month you threw something to our committee with the Laurel Street issue. Yeah. And we met to discuss and I've talked with the chief. And, um, you know, what it boils down to for me is from the naked eye, there's an issue there. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, something jets out into the street. Now, we don't know where the street begins and where it ends. And, and that's something that I think that we're going to answer that question uh, logically in, in uh, black and white. We've got to find that out. Okay. So I don't think it's a public safety issue. I think it belongs. You know, whether it's a zoning issue or, or back in the administration uh, side, I just wanted to let you know we took a look at it and um, don't feel that it's a public safety issue, but it does look like there's a, a problem about it. Okay. So if we could take a look at that, uh, Lori, I'm not sure how we go about finding you know, the answer to that question. But, uh, <coughs> the something. We'll something okay. And then uh, last thing, you know, this is getting to be a monthly habit, but you know, the use of social media, once again, uh, has, has played a, a significant role in, in uh, capturing uh, someone who's, who's done something wrong in our town. So uh, I commend the police department for their continued use of the social media and uh, um, look forward to reading the next story that gets put out there. So thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Blazing. Oh. I would like to say how what an honor it has been to serve with all of you, and uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate the community. Um, also wanted to touch on Mr. Lakas's comments about Ridge. We can have police officers try and slow traffic down more, but if you truly want to make that into a, a neighborhood, I think Expanding Cook School Park might be a, a, a firm solution. Now, there are some plans out there that we've discussed over the past two or three years. I think it would, it would really benefit the community. The park would be a better park. The traffic flow would be better. It would not be through traffic. It would not it would disable the cut through. Um, we are, there would be disadvantages possibly to some of the res residents on Pasavento. Um, I have mentioned before that uh, perhaps we should look to try it, you know, for a period of time. Uh, I realize that traffic studies may be in order and a great deal of, of expense. One of my suggestions was perhaps just trying it and seeing what would happen if we closed down Cook School Road in front of Cook School Park. So it's a thought. It might be a more effective solution uh, to uh, to ending the the, the cut through traffic uh, that is causing such a disservice to our residents. So I want to think about that. I look forward to seeing everyone at Light Up Nice. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, Just so that is December 1st, I believe. Um, December? Lori? December 1st. December 1st. 6 days. 6 Sergeant James, do you have anything? I do not, sir. All right. So, <laughs> thank you for coming, by the way. Go ahead. Uh, Solicitor McCarran. Um, you have my written report on the In your sights? Thank you, Mr. Brown. You have my written report. I'd like to point out a couple of things about Bauer Hill Road. Um, yes, we did take bids in July 2015 for the repairs to the road that uh, were to take place in 2015, but it was discovered that there were some delay, there were some issues 
Uh, there's some requests to do with additional investigation. Council approved the geotechnical investigation that delayed the work on the road. I believe there was uh, possibly six boreholes drilled along there to try to find the source of water. If there was any water, um, there was there was at the time of the winter of 2013 into 14, there was water creeping out of the shale along uh, Bower Hill Road, which I think was the cause of uh, some of the damages. When we did the work in 2013, we proofrolled Bower Hill Road the entire length with a loaded truck approximately 30 tons and did not find any de deflection or deformation in the sub base of the road. The road was milled and resurfaced, and binder and glaring surface was placed on it. Proof rolling it to find base repairs was a, is a normal practice, and it's an industry practice that's used to find where base repairs need to be located. It's unfortunate that water did, did percolate into the ground. We didn't find any problems when the geotechnical report was there. They were extensive. The recommendation of the geotechnical report was to install under drain along the high side of Bower Hill Road to capture any water so it wouldn't get underneath the sub-base of the road. In 2015, we were approached, we were, myself and Tom Robinson were out there one day marking up the site, getting ready to perform the work. Uh, and about halfway up the road, we smelled a very strong odor of natural gas. And at that time, I think felt I had a responsibility to notify People's Gas who came out and identified a gas line that was leaking that approached 100 years old in age. Okay, that was that was I think that was approximately July. Okay, they when they said they had to look into it and complete the work, they were delayed by approximately two months in getting their work started on Bower Hill Road. Yes, they didn't work at night. It didn't have a lot of inconvenience to the residents and the traffic of, of Bridgeville Borough on Bower Hill Road. But when they completed their work, they were well into October, approaching November, I believe. So the decision was made at that time to delay the work until 2017. So, you know, I realized that, you know, we were at the, um, under the schedule of our contractor to perform the work. Uh, he did not perform it until the first week of October. But uh, in the process between the time the gas company did their work and the um, work was completed, uh, we identified that there was additional base repairs that needed to be completed. The gas company decided to pitch in and pay for half of the wearing surface. We made the decision. I think I uh, came to Lori and asked her to about what thoughts were to uh, increase the quantity and do the wearing surface. And, uh, you know, one thing I will say is back in June of 2016, we had a change order that was approved by council that increased the quantities on the contract. And let me add this, you know, any contract the Gateway Engineers prepares <laughs> puts out the bid for road programs work is a unit price contract that has language in it that states that we reserve the right to add and delete the quantities of the unit prices. So we don't have to go back to the contractor and negotiate another price for the completion of the work. So I think, you know, you know, T.A. Robinson did a, a wonderful job getting the work done in one week. I will, I, do, I will acknowledge that maybe they didn't keep to the work hours and weren't off the road by 5 o'clock some days, but there were some challenges some days that they had to overcome. And <clears throat> they stayed with the job. You know, it was Tom Robinson's comment to me was, I want to get this job done in one week. He didn't want to drag it out. Dragging it out may have cost more than a total of $202,000. So, uh, you know, we have a project that's completed. Uh, we're doing everything that we can from an engineering standpoint, using the best engineering practices that are out there and the best construction methods that are available to us. So, okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Tia Robinson held with the original quantity bid price yes. um, that was three years old by the time Almost, yes, they, yeah, yes. That they did it. So um, he, he was fair to us in that round too that uh, to um, hold the price back to what it was instead of raising the price. So if we were to have to rebid it, then it would have been a whole other process. So it just that, that was also part of the 
overall reasons why they, they said it ended up the way it did. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. My comments earlier were not regarding T.A. Robinson. Comments earlier and, and now regarding Gateway Engineers. Shale Hillside existed in 2013, 2014, 2015. The water has not changed. If there should have been an underdrain, there should have been a suggestion for an underdrain when it was done the first time. The gas line has been leaking for several years. Please continue to report it. It was 100, approximately 100 years old in 2014, just like it's approximately 100 years old in 2017. My comments are not disparaging about the delays. Well, I'm just using Joe Seitz's comments about the gas line's age. I don't know exactly how old it is, okay? I don't know how old it is. I do know that it has been leaking and that the leaks were reported. And I'm very, ex extremely happy. Because one of the things that I'm happiest about in this borough is that over the past years, we have taken an initiative to replace utility lines prior to paving the road. I know it seems logical, but it was not always done. It's not always done. So I'm very happy with that effort. And I'm not critiquing the fact that it was delayed for that. Mm -hmm. Okay? We got my, my other question is, Joe, you mentioned that there was a change order in 2016 as to the quantities? Yeah, June 13th, uh, 2016. Okay. It was a change order for the increase in quantities. Okay. I used to cover with the gas company. Okay. Yeah. And that was for that the was gas company? The, gas, the, part the, gas company. the part the gas company did. Correct. Okay, well, again. And then we added to it. To to fix the road properly this time. This time, as we were tearing everything apart, not it paving the other side of the road, being that the time it passed, um, the road on the other side was starting to show the wear. So while we were in there, we wanted to make it all done in, in mm -hmm. one time and be over. A, a logical question on that is why we didn't redo the entire road base as opposed to doing just sectional pieces of it. You know, we did so many pieces of that checker, that it looked like a checkerboard. It might have been more efficient, you know, or more effective to do the entire work. I don't know, but that comes to the, uh, you know, the, the question of perhaps re-looking at what caused the road to fail, because I still, to this moment, even with the geotechnical analysis, don't think the gateway is certain as to what caused the road to fail and if they've solved the problem yet. One final item. As far as the time, I appreciated that it was done in one week. It was a quantity price job, so it was in the contractor's best interest to accomplish it in one week. Okay? They stretched and caused difficulties by running over timelines. Okay? And I think that the borough, you know, the, the residents, had to deal with that from a traffic standpoint, which uh, which added to the difficulty. Right. Uh, that's it on that issue. There's another issue that I wanted to bring up that I forgot on my report. One of the people that I was rather honored to serve with was Billy Calusi. And Billy Calusi talked about one thing for many, many meetings, and that was cleaning out the crap. After decades of being told we couldn't, Billy Colusi got us to find out that we could. And we did. And since the creek had been cleaned out, sediment removed, uh, we have had, you know, McLaughlin Run in front of Baldwin Street has been working, it has been flowing a little bit better. We don't seem to have the flooding problems. Now, again, I'm no. I'm no expert on flooding, <coughs> but I would like to ask that we continue with Billy Colusi started and make sure that our public works go, go into the creek and, get, and remove the debris. There's a part of a wall that has fallen into the creek. There is debris in the creek. I, I would ask, Mr. Galladucci, I know that, that that, 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 that continue. Yep, it will. 
Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Uh, Fire Chief Ochoa. Thanks, Mr. President. Yeah, you have my report for October, which you seem <clears throat> kind of very busy. Uh, we just to note two things: we were assisted on we assisted Dormont on their fire on Piermont and Upper Saint Clair on their fire they had about a week ago. But we keep on going. Um, we do have the mega bash tickets out there; still some left, so please get. It's a good, it's a good event. It's it. You know, we're getting good rapport off of it. So, just to let everybody know, good fundraiser, good Christmas present for somebody. We have them here at the office. Yeah. Twenty bucks. That's all it is. Twenty dollars. Twenty-five thousand. Five hundred dollars each. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. What you got on? Next year. South Bridge. Uh, Dan Miller's not here. Uh, historical Society. Actually, very much. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, before I tell you about tomorrow's program and the end of this month's program, I have to tell you, please, PennDOT, Bridgeville Borough, listen. Germany, I am German, and when they do a road, doesn't matter if it's two lanes or eight, they go down 60 inches and they build that road. And at the end of the brick finish of the whole thing, the contract is signed. If anything happens in five years, buddy, you come back and fix it at your expense. Wouldn't that be a nice way to run PennDOT and Birchville and all of them? It was really frightening that we found that out very quickly in Germany. Um, aside from that, tomorrow night, we're going back to Birchville High School starting with the year 1939. And that is the year that my oldest brother graduated from Birchville High School. And I wish he could be here to hear this tomorrow night. But at any rate, God knows what we're going to do in December. Uh, but the programs at the fire, at the uh, railroad <coughs> station have been extremely successful. So you're all invited to that. And I tried to hand out the few of these that I had. The other thing, at the end of the month, the speaker came to us about a year ago and told us about the bank robbery in Castle Shannon. I think it was 1915, 1917. Um, the criminals were all from Russia. They were not American citizens. Uh, there were two deaths and two tellers in the bank were killed. Um, this man, you had to laugh and you had to cry when he talked. He was excellent. So at the end of this month, he's going to tell us about the ship Niagara in Lake Erie, and he's bringing or he's going to draft some people to be uh, part of the, my child, helpers, workers on that boat. But come to the fire hall, because that one is really a great program. And that's about it for now. I wish to thank everyone, say congratulations to those who won, thank everyone for their work, and please come to one of these. They're fantastically interesting. Back last month, I learned more history than I ever wanted to. And that's hard to say. Thank you, you, Mary. Uh, Virtual Library, uh, Patty Whitman. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much this evening. Um, I wanted to just um, um, talk a little bit about the library. I have shared with the Borough Council um, copies of uh, financial reports, kind of an overview of how we're doing at the library, where our funding is, sources are from, um, the per capitas for communities based on the state um, library code, and um, today is a very important day because 55 years ago today, after much planning and solicitation of funds and materials for the citizens and local businesses, the Bridgeville Public Library opened its doors on November 13, 1962.
Today, the library is still a vibrant part of the Bridgeville community, and the data shows that persons of all ages are not only using its books and materials, but also enjoying the current library space as a community center for social and educational needs. In the handout, which I apologize to the audience, um, it shows that the library is currently able to manage the expenses of operation. This is made possible due to the contract for management that we entered into with South Central <coughs> Township Library, as well as taking advantage of other collaborations to reduce overall expenses of the library and careful stewardship of income from all sources. The library is now preparing for not only the typical increases in utilities and other operational expenses, but also for the significant financial challenges which will coincide with the mortgage coming due in 2020. These challenges could result in drastic cuts to the library services provided to our community. The Pennsylvania State Library Code states municipal funding of the local library is to be a minimum of $5 per capita. This funding goal could be met with an increase of just under $6,000 in added and annual support. And an increase would allow the library to prepare for coming financial challenges and help to ensure continued access to this valuable, valued community resource. If council requires further information than is what is provided in the summary, the library has provided more detailed documents to the financial committee, and we will respond promptly to any other information requests not covered in those. Board of Trustee meetings are held the third Tuesday of each month and are open to the public. We are proud to recognize the heritage of our library's place in the community, and with your support, our library will continue to serve the generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Colonel Manager, Lori uh, I've provided my written report. Um, just one correction on page three. Um, the uh, budget workshop meeting is not January 21st, 2018. I don't know what I'm. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to be doing on that day. This is November 21st, 2017. So, if anyone has any questions. Old business. New business. You know I always have something. <laughs> so the Southwest Community Chamber of Commerce I had called and asked me today to announce uh, that the annual holiday luncheon that's at Nevillewood is December 12th from 11.30 to 1.30. Um, with Mandy Pryor, this being her first year, she really wants to go all out uh, on the event. So there's a lot of things that are coming, uh, including, uh, they're even raffling off a TV that they had a certain bank uh, uh, uh -huh. sponsor. Um, but they also uh, have a, a very well-known um, I'm not sure if it's the whole group, but part of a group that's coming to the event that's, I can't announce yet, but supposedly it's going to be very impressive and a very nice lunch that they're putting together. She has already sold, I think, over 100 tickets to the event, so um, you need to act fast. I, I think that they're going to be around 200, so, and it's already, it's, only, it's still a month out, so anybody that's interested in going? You have um, to be a member? No. What's the date again, Joe? Uh, December 12th. I believe it's 35 for members and 45 for non-members. It's the cost. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The other new business. I got something real quick. I know people have been saying all night congratulations to the new winners or the new elected authors, but um, I definitely want to say congratulations. Um, we have some new faces coming on council. Excited to, uh, to work with them. Some familiar faces coming back. Um, I want to thank the people who ran, uh, put themselves out there. Uh, you, you open yourself up to public scrutiny, and it's difficult. And um, you put yourself out there for public opinion, and um, that's what makes this, you know, this government great. And finally, I want to thank the people who um, served with me. Uh, Neil, thank you for the last four years. It's been great knowing you. Um, you know, we've definitely got another meeting here. Um, Bert, I want to thank you for coming in at a time where it was very difficult for this council and we lost uh, Bill Pelosi 
stepping up and filling these shoes uh, very honorably. You've done a lot of work for us. And Pat, thank you for the last four years keeping me on the toes. <laughs> I, I guess you're not going to be around now, so I won't see you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you very much, and I uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Yes. Uh, is there a motion? Second. All those in favor? Uh,